Hi guys, Marshall here with this week's Sanity Check. And this week, the Sanity Check is inspired by one of my uh, students, one of my members of our community, actually. She had posted something about love and basically said this, I don't like anything about myself. I'm at a zero on the self-worth scale. This is a biggie. This is something we live with all the time. Uh, post-codependency and in codependency and there's a very good reason why it's all about how our value was communicated to us and how value is established and then worthiness of love how we how we become worthy of being loved right think about that for a moment worthy of being loved does that sound really normal to you or does that kind of like punch a little bit like something's off there because if something's off there, you're tuning into an awareness that you've been sold a lie, right? Are you buying into the lie that love is earned? That's the question to really explore here. Because love isn't earned. And we hear that said a lot, right? It's almost cliche these days. Well, love isn't earned, it's received or whatever. It is. It is received, but there's a difference here. We, that we really need to understand and it comes from our experience when we deal with toxic people we deal with toxic or deficient systems narcissists abusers things like that they're operating from a survival mindset that uses us as an object for what is called supply that supply will be validation of their image regulation of their emotions um, inflation of their sense of value, uh, their esteem, their importance, things like that. Because that's their defense mechanism against the emptiness that they have, the shame they have, and their lack of self. For codependence, we shed ourselves, we discard ourselves, and we, we absorb them instead. And then in hopes, and, and we do this all in hopes of trying to get love back from the target, from the narcissist. We hope that if I be everything they want me to be, they'll be everything I want them to be. That's the big codependent fantasy that's going on there. And so love is twisted into these very uh, toxic knots in all of this, and it's used as a pawn. And a lot of times what happens is the narcissist shows up with a promise of love. They're telling us all these beautiful things, things we've always wanted to hear, how important we are, how valuable we are, how, how they really, uh, we complete them. You know, a little Jerry Maguire, you complete me kind of stuff. Um, it really gets us into it because it's finally meeting a, a deeply unmet need to be valued, to be valuable, and to be seen and loved for who we are. Okay, when we talk about loving ourselves, it's not about a doing. In these nar narcissistic toxic systems, love is attached to performance. It's attached to what you create, what your output is. You're lovable if you do X. You're unlovable if you do Y. Very toxic system. Now, and, and it also conflates abuse with love. Loving relationships do not abuse each other. Yes, you're going to have conflicts, but conflicts aren't name-calling and personal attacks and deliberately attacking vulnerable feelings or putting people down. Conflicts are about a situation. They're about like, this doesn't work right now. We need to, to make some changes so we can get our needs met, right? <coughs> Completely different. And that's why I'm a hardcore person when it comes to not tolerating toxic, deficient relationships with people who will not take responsibility own themselves and grow up okay all right so love is freely given love is a respect and embrace of a person place or thing just as it is and this is where love starts to become accessible to us now we we have internalized conditioning towards ourselves comes in through the form of shame. I'm not worthy. I'm not lovable. I'm disgusting. I'm wrong. Nobody would love something like me. My feelings are a burden. My feelings are bad. My needs are selfish. That kind of thing. This internalization prevents us from actually receiving love. So we must begin to release that. 
We need to release the love or release the shame around our beingness so that we become available to receive love and then connect with our true self, our true in-depth awareness about who we are. Okay? Because fundamentally, codependency is solved by discovering who we are and integrating that with love. Because we aren't shameful. We aren't a burden. We're beautiful. We're brilliant. We're powerful. And we are worth knowing, loving, and keeping. We are. We don't have to earn it. We don't even have to prove it. Our job is to be it. To connect back into us through being this. Really, it's very um, straightforward. It's it's almost anticlimactic. It's like, how do you heal codependency? Well, one, you don't. Two, because it's a symptom. You can't heal symptoms. But two, you heal the real cause of it, which is not love and neglect. It's a lack of self. So we get really connected back with ourself. And with love, we begin to radiate. Our brilliance shows up. We're in tune with us. This is what being you brilliantly, my, my live mentorship, my eight-week mentorship is all about. It's a rapid process about getting you deeply rooted in you. And it builds on the concepts that I teach in my other courses, such as Heal and Thrive Strategy. But it's a rapid process for that. And it's, it's live-guided, where the other ones are all self-guided. Now, and if you want this, if this is really resonating with you, this is where you want to go with your life. You want to know who you are. You want to know your own brilliance. You want to start creating a life you want to live. Join uh, Being You Brilliantly. All you got to do is apply below. Click the link, follow the instructions, and we'll get you into it. So, but back to love. We do not earn love anymore. We need to start receiving it. Okay? And this is a, this can be really challenging. I'm not going to sit here and make this, oh, it's easy. No, it can be very challenging at times to love ourselves because of that internalized conditioning. So the first act of love we do for ourselves is starting to give ourselves permission. The first act is to give ourselves permission to let go of our shame. Just a little bit. Let go of our sense of unworthiness. Just a teeny bit. And give ourselves a chance to reconnect with us to receive love. So we're gonna do that here for a minute, here in our sanity check. I'm gonna ask you a Sedona method-based question. These are hypothetical questions. They are not a command. Just answer if you could, would you, okay? So here we go. If you could, would you just, just for this moment, allow yourself to love yourself just as you are right now? And if you could do that, when would you do that? These two questions you can answer with a yes and a now and just explore how it feels. So let's do it again. If you could, would you let yourself love yourself just a little right now? And if you could do that, when would you do that? And check in and see how that feels. Sometimes people feel lighter. Sometimes they feel heavier. Sometimes nothing changes at all. That's all okay. If you could, would you let yourself receive that just as it is? And if you could, when would you do that? Because love is really about that. It's about receiving us. It's about giving us a sense of connection, allowance to be as we are. Because we don't have to earn it. We're not in a narcissistic relationship anymore. So let's stop treating ourselves as though we are the problem. Let's start giving ourselves the love we've always deserved and we've always been worthy of. Allow ourselves to feel it. So let that love land. Allow it to integrate with you so that you can begin to discover for yourself the truth, the reality that you've been lied to all this time. Love isn't earned. Love is actually received and that you are absolutely worthy of it. The only thing you have to do now is to start to make space to receive it and allow yourself to receive it. 
That means getting rid of the shame. That means shedding the false identities, the false claims about yourself, the trauma, the shame, the codependency, the self-hate, and opening up to truly being seen, being known, and being loved for who you are. So are you ready to transform your codependency into your brilliance and to really tap into who you are? Because if you are, click the link below and apply for your seat in Being You Brilliantly. And let's make this happen together and see what you do with your life post-codependency. Thank you guys for showing up for this week's Sanity Check. Use those questions. Get deeper into your beingness. Connect back with you. And I'll see you guys in the next video. Okay? Bye-bye.